place in the spirit in this nation. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the transformation that is taking place in the hearts of your people. Oh, Rabba Shakara Basoto Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, oh God, that it is possible. You made it possible, Lord. You made it possible. May we align ourselves. May we avail ourselves, O oh God, for the work of transformation. Lord God, we are your vessels. We are your vessels, Lord. Lord, we are who you desire to use to do the work, Lord. Help us to avail ourselves. Lord God, oh, may our hearts be pure before you. May our motives be pure before you, O oh God, as we come this morning to worship you and to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, O oh God. We thank you for what you will do in our midst this morning. We thank mighty God and we give you praise. We give you glory, honey, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We come humbly into this place and we open our mouths and we continue to give you praise. I invite you just to, to join with me this morning. We cannot give God enough praise and worship Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you are good and you are great. And you are greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you, Lord. God, we honor you, Lord God, this morning. We thank you, God, for taking us through the week. What a week it was, but we thank you, God, that we are still standing. We are still standing. Lord, we can still give you praise. Lord, we can still give you honor. By an act of our will, we declare, God, that you are good and you are great. And you are awesome and there is no God like you in all of the earth. And we worship you this morning. And we honor you this morning. We thank you, God, that your faithfulness is new every morning and your mercies they start new today and we thank you god for your goodness lord god for your power lord that, that is revealed every single day hallelujah hallelujah we thank you lord that when we praise you your word declares that the enemies that we see today will not see them tomorrow lord god because we recognize, Lord, that you fight on our behalf every single day. Hallelujah. Great, 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 great is our God. Great, 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 great is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, this morning that you inhabit the praises of your people. And we open our mouths and just continue to give you praise. We continue, Lord God, to honor you because you are good. You are good. You are great. Lord, you are awesome. Father, we thank you for the rains this morning that started so early, Lord. And it is not torrential that it would wash us away. But it has come, Lord God, to refresh the earth, Lord God. And we give you thanks for that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to do a new thing in our earth. And even it, as it says in Isaiah this morning, Lord, we sing to the Lord a new song. And your praises we declare from the ends of the earth. You advise us, those of us who go down to the sea. 
and everybody. Let the wilderness and the cities lift up their voice. Let us praise you. Let us give glory to the Lord. And we continue, Lord, to declare your praises in the islands. Because, Lord, we declare that you shall go forth, Lord, like a mighty hand. And you, O oh God, will stir up your zeal like a man of war this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, who is like unto our God this morning. There is none that is like unto our God. And as I said, you know, with all of the things that have happened this week, personally and nationally, I continue to declare, I can be glad that my hope is in the Lord. Is anybody glad with me this morning that your hope is in the Lord that despite everything that happened, our hope is in the Lord. He who has made the earth and everything in the earth, that is the God that we serve. And so we can clap our hands and we say, Lord, despite what happened, we know that you are still on your throne and we can give you our praise. This morning we can shout hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lord our God, the Almighty, because he reigns, he reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, good morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you shall have what you declare. Come on, turn to the other person and say, neighbor, you shall have what you declare. And right where you're standing, I'm going to ask that you open up your mouth and begin to declare what you desire to see in the midst of us today. Come on, open up your mouth right where you are and be begin to declare the goodness of the Lord in the room this morning. Come on, begin to declare the presence of the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you that we are in your presence where there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Father, with the fruit of our lips, we will bless you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go. Child of God, and I've got 
Come on, don't talk. Oh, don't talk. Don't talk defeat to me. I am a child of God. And I've got a victory. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. Oh, yes. I'm an overcomer. In the name of the Lord, say we are going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, say we are going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Say don't talk. No, no. Don't talk defeat to me. I am a child of God. And I've got the victory. And I've got the victory. Say don't talk. No, no. Don't talk defeat to me. I am a child of God. And I've got the victory. I am. I am a warrior. I am. I'm an overcomer. In the name of the Lord. I am a warrior. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. I am. I'm an overcomer. In the name. Come on, put your hands together right there. Come on. Going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer in the name of the Lord. Say we are going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer in the name of the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, Don't talk to me. To me. Don't talk. Victory, say don't talk. No, no. Don't talk defeat to me. Talk defeat to me. I am a child of God, and I've got. To we're all the warriors in the house. Come on, declare it. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. I am. I'm an overcomer. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. 
who lifted high, who lifted high, the name of Jesus is lifted high in this place. You sing the name of Sons of God, where are the ones? 
for evil. God has turned it around for your good. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around, turned it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it I want you to look at your neighbors, I had declared. Come on, what the enemy meant for evil. Enemy man. God has turned it around. Making a way for me. Come on, he is making a way. He is making a way. He is making a way for me. 
making a way, making a way. He keeps making a way for me. He keeps making a way, making a way for me. He keeps making, making a way, making a way. He keeps making a way, making a, making a way, 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 making a way. He keeps making a way. Making a way, 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 making a way. He is turning around, turning around for my good. He keeps turning around for my good. Oh, yeah. Somebody's getting their breakthrough right. Come on. He keeps making a way. He keeps making a way. Making a way. He keeps making a way. Making a way. Making a way. He keeps making. Making a way. Making a way. He keeps making a way. I believe that there is a place for you to shout. That's the best place for you to give him praise right there. Come on, that's the best place to praise him. He is making a way in the wilderness. He is giving streams in the desert places. Come on. Come on, put your hands together like this. Making a way, he keeps making, he keeps making a way, making a way for him. He keeps making, he keeps making a way, making a way for him. He keeps making, he keeps making a way, making a way for me. He keeps making, making a way for. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around. Turn it. Somebody's getting their breakthrough right there. Enemy meant for evil. God has turned it. God has turned it around for Declare it until you see it. Come on. What the enemy Turn it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned. I believe that song is for somebody this morning. What the enemy meant for evil, what the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around. Turn it. Turn it around for my good. He is making a way. He keeps making a way. Making a way for me. He keeps making. He keeps making. He has turned it around, turned it around for my good. 
turn it around for my good. He has turned it, he has turned it around. Oh, turn it, take it away. of today on the hour every hour declaring it to be true and it is not only true today for your personal life today it is true for the nation in which you live. Everything that has happened for this nation, in this nation, since 1962, that we became an independent nation, as the servant of the Lord, I declare to you today, Everything is working 
he's turning it around for your good. He's turning it around for your good. Embrace it. Hold on to it. It is the word of the Lord that has the currency of now. I just turned to the lead singer leading us this morning, and I just asked her, did you write that song? And she said, no. And I said to her, what a shame. Why didn't you? <laughs> because it's powerful. It has an anointing on it. My music people getting accustomed to me now when I tell them there are some songs that carries an anointing. There are some you have to work up the anointing to come on it, but it has it. As we sing it again, I'm going to just make one, one request of you, not forcing you, but asking that you, just a try, because of what we must do today, it will help, because in the kingdom of God, the power of of unity is powerful and what we need to do. So I'm going to ask as much as you can, feel free, don't feel a burden, but if we could ask all the people on the far outsides here, you see, let us fill up as much of the spaces together because something powerful is going to seal we are going to seal today. Listen carefully to the servant of the Lord. We are sealing. Still echoing, Dane. Going back. What is critical to the destiny of a nation. We are sealing it today. We are sealing it. So declare again. He's turning it around. So come in inside here. We can fill it up. Well, let's fill it. Let's just come in as much as you can all over in the spaces here because we're going to do transactions for God. Hit it. What the enemy meant for evil God has turned Turn it, it around. around. Turned it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for my. Come on, lift your voice with me and sing. Come on. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around. Turned
seated let me teach you something a little bit quickly the greatest anointing is on the first part of the song not the second verse there is a spiritual truth remember God it sounds good God is making a way he is not man he is never making a way for you he has already made the way for you. Never making is made. Got to speak truth, declare truth, because if not, you will still walk away hoping for something to happen in the future when it is already done that you must establish it in the present. Let me just say this before I get into everything else this morning, because it was maybe God wants us all to me to say to you, we were sharing together with the worship team, let me release your man, go, with the worship team before we came into the service, that there is a little thing, come on, just hear the servant of the Lord here. This is to encourage you a little bit. There is a little thing that seems small, but it makes the world of difference to whether you make, you see your breakthroughs or not, and what is holding up our breakthroughs. And it's tied into what we just, what I just said, with that second verse that he's making a way because you're gone into the future in hoping but hope must be based on faith so you never hope for what you don't have faith for and faith is never in the future faith is always present and that's why you can hope for the future because you have a sure foundation on which to hope but for us when the Lord has spoken and you believe you have heard the word of the Lord and you believe by faith what God has said. Follow me closely. If you believe what God has said, then believing is not activated to bring about that for which you believe until the belief that you believe 
is such a belief on your inside that it brings a conviction to the heart because you are convinced in your mind that it is so, and when you believe it enough that it full, you are full of your belief, then you must speak what you believe. Until you speak and declare what you believe, it is not energized to produce anything. Lord, you heard what I say? So what I'm saying is that little gap why we are not seeing a lot more of what you believe by faith is because it's only in your mind. You think about it, but it doesn't fool your heart. When it fools your heart, Listen carefully. When it what? Then out of the what? Or the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Because the mouth is the overflow outlet valve of the heart. So until it flows through your mouth, your heart, not full yet. Follow me. And then it overflows with your mouth. But what energizes it also, it's because you and I were created like God. God is a speaking being. He does everything by speaking. By word. Come on, walk with me. And when he created us, remember what it says. When God created man, dust of the, out, then the earth, then he breathed breath into him, and man became a living, speaking being or a soul. That means a speaking being. So he became a speaking being just like God. So we establish with the word of our mouth. So if you believe it in your heart, you must declare it with your mouth. It is Corinthians, somebody find it for me, please. It's Corinthians five, 6 or 7, somewhere there. And it's quoting from the psalm. What it says is, because we believe, therefore we speak. So what is believed in the heart must be spoken with the mouth. Until you speak it with the mouth, it is not released to become in reality. So a lot of God's promises is locked up on your inside. A locket of the word of God, you still have it. But I know the Lord said it, sure he did. But it can't come to pass. Because you don't believe it yet. But I believe it. But you have held on to it. It is not activated until it is spoken. God has all the plans, but until he speaks, it doesn't happen. So the Spirit of the Lord brood over the waters. And then God said, and the moment God said it, it became a lot of the things in your life have been waiting to become because you have not said it. 
You have not released it into being with the authority that you have. And very often you're not speaking it because you really don't yet believe it enough that it is a conviction and a, and a convincing in your mind out of a conviction of your heart so that you know it to be so. And when you know it, you speak it. If not, you're still contemplating. So hold that this morning as one of the thoughts you work with this week and for the rest of your life. You are a speaking being. And this is why the word says the power of death and life is in your tongue. So speak. When you speak it, you give life. Until you speak it, you haven't given life to it yet. You release it. You give it life when you speak. And therefore, don't speak what you ought not to speak because you give life to what ought not to be said. And that's why cock mouth kill cock. Because you declare things that bring death to your life. Only speak what brings life. Because power and authority is in you. So what you declare becomes because you are like your God. Amen. So tell your neighbor, watch your mouth, but use your mouth. <laughs> Come on, you know what I mean by watch your mouth? Yeah. But use your mouth. That's life. That's why over your country, don't speak death. Speak what? Of course you see things that could call death. But you're not agreeing with the death. You're agreeing with what? That's why Jesus says, I only say what I hear my father say. <laughs> don't say anything that God don't say. Because you speak death over your life. But I don't know that if it's going to happen. You just kill it. God tell it I'm about to bless you. Well, I'm not sure. You just kill it. I don't know. Nobody, is ever, nobody ever blesses me. Nobody ain't going to bless you. <laughs> you just kill it. By your words, you are justified. By your words, you are condemned. Speak life. So therefore, let's declare this morning. Were we just sing a while ago? Wait a sec. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it. Thank you. I turn it around for good. So therefore, you agree with God now. So raise your hands with me and begin to say, Thank you, Lord. That everything the enemy has meant for evil, you have turned it around for my good. So from this day, I will see your goodness in the land of the living. You have turned it around. 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 Come on, until your soul feel it, you drive out the doubt. Drive out the fear. And tell yourself till your spirit sense it. You have turned it around. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Lord. Thank you. you have turned it around accept nothing else believe nothing else you declare what you believe man and you shall have what you say glory to God hallelujah 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 is turning it around. 
He's turned it around for you. Thank you. Thank you for the new day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The past is over. A new day has dawned. You have turned it around. You have turned it around. And because you believe it, you shall see it. Come on, tell your neighbor, because you believe it, you will see it. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it. So start looking for it, man. Get up and look for it now. Because this is when you are now, faith becomes the substance for what you hope for. So you are looking for what you hope for because faith has produced it and you have declared it, releasing it, so it must now become. It has no choice. Thank you, Lord. So we welcome you this morning. Welcome to Fellowship Tabernacle, this place of worship today where we have gathered in the name of the living God, Jehovah, 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 where Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord of our lives and Lord of the earth. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the King of the heavens. And therefore, he shall become the king of the kingdoms of the earth, for they shall become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. So to him this morning, we give all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, for the Lord is good, and his mercies endure forever. So we declare the Lord, he is good, and his mercies endures forever. So we thank you, Lord. So welcome to you, wherever you're joining us from, on whatever platform that you are listening or on this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For those of you outside of Jamaica, it is an overcast day. It rained most of the night, certainly in this part of the, of the country. And so it is a very overcast day, but it is a good day. For the Lord has turned everything around for us. So on this overcast day, the sun is shining brightly in our hearts and lives because it is well. It is well. For the Lord is prophesying, I'm prophesying to you know, for the Lord has perfected that which concerns you. Believe it. It is well. It is well. So thanks for joining us, and we ask you to stay with us as we share this time together. Today is a very important time again for us in this house and for what we have the privilege on behalf of God to be able to do for our country, for the future of this nation, and it will also affect many nations in the earth. It is wonderful and marvelous. Today for our service, we want to complete in this our war room briefing continuation we want to do one more act for a few moments to seal what we have been doing the last two weeks, or it could be three, brain, remember which. But specifically, this other thing the Lord is saying, yes, son, do it now, and we do it here. 
We've been talking about doing it for six months now in another forum. It ha we haven't, but I feel the Lord says, go ahead, do it now, because it's urgent and the situation. So we're going to conclude what we have done so that, so that things can begin to happen in the purposes of God for the nation. For us here as a house, walk with the servant of the Lord this morning. It is important that you understand what God has been doing through us and with us and what we have done the last two weeks. is to understand that let me word it this way for you so I want to make sure I don't miss it. What we have been doing for the last couple of weeks has been a prophetic spiritual process of the healing of healing the land by biblical processes. It may look simple and favor nothing to the mind who don't understand, who are ignorant of the ways of God and the processes of God. What we did in the last couple of weeks like I say, you are, are my sheep. You have to understand. If others don't the same way because of what we are called to do. And so prophetically, I can say to you, had we understood it, had I understood it, what we did the last two weeks, if we had done it 10 years ago, the nation would be different today. But we didn't. Because we didn't know. Or didn't understand. But we did a lot of things. But ignorance holds up a lot of other things. Because when you don't know, you're just what? Don't know. So that's one angle. But also, sometimes we have to say, God knew that we didn't know. <laughs> Am I still with you? Still with me? He knew we didn't know, and so he works with us because he's always trying to bring us into an understanding, a knowledge, so that when we know, that is why the moment God reveals stuff and you know it now, you are responsible for what you know. So do what you need to do, because now you know. Once you know, act. Once God gives you revelation and you understand what the will of the Lord is and how God works, act. So what we did was powerful. So it is for the healing. But God often uses the simple and apparently foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That is why the Word of God says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Because sometimes it looks so insignificant that we think, oh, no, no, if you doubt me, Ask your parents, <laughs> when you were born, that little baby, most of them didn't have a clue <laughs> what you would become and what, would you be, what you would be doing today. And for some of you, if your parents knew what you would have become, 
them wouldn't treat you <laughs> like how them did treat you. Am I talking to anybody in the room here? <laughs> but they didn't know. They did not know the time of their what? God, today, you are the blessing in their lives, this in spite of what they did and said about you. Because they just didn't know. That's, what, that's how most things are in life. When it comes to you, you don't recognize it. You don't see it. That's why you, it will, I am learning now to live better by just doing what God says. Bobby, he said, in everything, just give thanks to it, brother. You don't know about the tomorrow. So today, you just trust God with it and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The good, the bad, and the ugly. You just say, thank you, Jesus. And you will live better with less frustration and panic. You just thank him for everything. Change your attitude. Because if your parents knew who you would have become today, if you're not careful, they would have bowed down. To, the day you did born, they would have bowed down and thought, mm -hmm. but they didn't know. And as I hear that, I hear the Lord saying, for some of you this morning, forgive them. You're still holding them guilty for stuff that's affecting your life because you are angry and bitter. He's telling you this morning, they didn't know. They didn't know. Let it go. Forgive them. Free your soul because he wants to bless you. But you're holding on to the hurts of the past of what people did to you coming up and you're not free. And he wants you to be free this morning. So let it go. Because God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. That's why we miss the small things. So I tell you, what we did the last two weeks is transforming a nation and touching a world and its purposes. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 says, I see it. This is why it's in the background of all that I've said, why the scripture teaches us that God, very often, it's not many wise that he chooses not many wise God often when he wants to do something it is not many <laughs> of the brightest and the best and remember you know all the brightest and the best is God created them and gifted them to be the brightest and the best but when he's ready to use someone if is very few of the brightest and the best that he uses. I don't have to tell you why. You can soon figure out why he doesn't go there. But he uses the foolish things of the earth. And that's why we miss it all the time. How could a baby be born in a manger be the savior of the world? How could he be born to just average people and he is the God of the heaven. Both you are the son of God. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. <laughs> That's what the fellow Jews told him. Because they must have been Jamaicans with a Jamaican anointing. But you come over here, son of God. Son of God. Up on the road, you're born. <laughs> come and come tell me about say you are son of God. Go away. Go away. Go away. Out of hard and rude. That's how we are. That's really how we are. So, brothers and sisters, that's the word of the Lord. What it says now? Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. <laughs> Not many of you were wise. 
by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. You give us 27, make we just see what it says. I mean, I even remember what it says for sure. But not many of us was of noble birth. But God, <laughs> but God what? Of the world to shame the wise. And if me ever tell you you are the foolish things of God, a cuss who know that cuss me, you know. Because we pride rise up. Oh, you call me foolish, pastor. Tell me something foolish. Well, this morning, <laughs> me I tell you, you is among the foolishest thing <laughs> when they upon the earth <laughs> that in Jamaica. But foolish, but God have chosen me. <laughs> oh, glory to God. We are the chosen of God to fulfill the purposes of God, though many would look on us as the despised of the earth. We are one of the smallest nations on the planet, but we are the chosen of God for the purposes of God. Israel is still, um, like us, not much bigger than us, one of the smallest nations of the earth, but they are the chosen of God. You are the chosen. So what we did the last two weeks you must understand it differently and if you don't understand it just believe it and leave it because it is important to the purposes of God but trust the Lord and obey him do not lean on your own understanding. Do not what? Do not lean on your own understanding. For Job, oh, let me leave Job. Don't lean to your own understanding, but trust this God that he knows what he's doing. So I encourage you this morning to understand it. And so we are going to do a third piece of what is necessary to, as the Lord has revealed, to complete a process so that a nation can be released into her destiny. Years to come, you will be able to say to your children and grandchildren, I was there when it happened. I was in that service when the small thing happened that transformed my nation. I was in that prayer meeting. Because the God of the universe, he knows the way that you take. Job 23 Verse 16. The Lord knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, tested me, I will come forth like pure gold. Walk with the servant of God today. I'm flowing. I know I'm in the spirit. I'm not guessing. This is going to help you. The God of heaven knows the way 
let you take. He knows what you are going through right now. He knows all that has happened in your life. He knows everything about you. He understands all that is happening and all that has happened in your life. And you have wept over some of it and you regret it. Stop regretting it. Because he has also said to you, because I know I will cause all things to work for your good. Oh, let your heart this morning begin to say, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. You work it. You work it, Father. You work it. Because he is actively at work for you today. Everything works together for the good of them. And so therefore, today and going forward for us in a new way, remember Proverbs 3, verse 6. Proverbs 3, which you know it well. What he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. From this day forward, I ask you, bear this in mind in the context that we have crossed over into the land of promise. And having crossed over into the land of promise, that's where we are now. We must live in the land of promise. But living in the land of promise, you have crossed over into a place where you have never been before. You are in the land and you have come in to conquer and to take the territory, but you have never been this way before, you are in a land where you are surrounded by enemies. Come on, walk with me, you know. You are surrounded by what? Enemies. And the fear of you is upon them. They are panicking, but they don't like you because they know that you have come to take over. So they are fearful now. But they are also beginning to plan how to resist you. So, you now must settle, rule, and reign in the land. You must what? Settle, rule, reign, because you are here to conquer the territory. But because you have not passed this way before. You don't know anything about this place. You don't know where you're going. You don't even know what to do. So listen to the servant of the Lord, what he's saying to you this morning. The only way you are going to survive is on the verse we just quoted a while ago, the Proverbs 3. Do what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own 
understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and let him direct your path. This verse of scripture is what you have to hang on from here on in. You have to hold on to it for the rest of the way. Because you're in the land now. And I don't know the land. I don't know the way. I am in enemy territory. This is the place of my inheritance. And everything that I am to get is in the hand of my enemy. It is in somebody else's hand. And I don't even know whose hand it is and where it is. I only know it is somewhere out there in front of me. <laughs> but the only way, Sam, is to trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to what you think you know. This is why your best position, why God have led us, Sean, to be talking about humility. Your best position is to know nothing. Do assume you know nothing. Do make begin to think because you get these new glasses now. All of a sudden, you look like intellectual and bright. Me and Leisha know different. <laughs> so we know you're not as bright as you look. So now make the glasses make you think anything. Trust in the Lord. With all of your heart, <laughs> lean not unto your own understanding, but call it in all of your ways. Not some, not a portion, all of your ways. Acknowledge him. What does that mean? Die to you. You have to cease to exist. That's why you had to come through Jordan. Go down into humility. Die to you. And say, Lord, without you, I am nothing. I cannot. I don't know anything over here. The people that I am coming against, they are greater in number than us. They now number us 50 to 1. We have no might against this large army. We cannot defeat them. But, oh God, our eyes are upon you. It is only you who can take me through. It's only you who can give me the victory. It is only you because what I am faced with is an impossibility by all human standards. You can't manage what you face. So don't make no doppy delude you. What is before you is bigger than you. But thanks be to God. Come on, what? Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Today, you are more than conquerors. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to come through. We're going to come out. But only if you take Proverbs 3, verse 6, and apply it to your heart. Trust in the Lord. Come on. Do what? Trust in the Lord with what? All of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, submit to him. And he will make 
your paths straight. He's going to make it straight. So therefore, beloved, you are now in a season of faith. You're in a season of what? You have crossed over. There is only one way to live. Fellowship, tabernacle, and every saint of God on the planet who would hear this servant of God today. There is only one way to live successfully for the rest of your life, and it is to live by faith in the living God. So therefore, learn what is faith, how faith works, and how to work it. You're in a zone where it's only those who live by faith can guarantee, will be guaranteed victory. So trust the Lord. You are in what I'm calling for you this morning, a season of faith. You just stepped into it. It's the only way to live as a child of God. If you are going to fulfill your purpose and destiny, if you are going to overcome. But you are in God's time and season. Because your God, Job 23.10, he knows the way that you take. <laughs> he knows the way that you take. Mm. So in our prophetic act of the last two weeks, talking about your understanding it, you know. In the prophetic act of the last two weeks, based on our call as a prophetic people, and I have had to accept it as my personal call, and therefore our corporate call as a people called Fellowship Tabernacle, to stand in a prophetic role in our nation in this time and to exercise in prophetic flow and authority Jeremiah 1, 10, which is what we've been doing, the Jeremiah 1, 10. And so what we have done is followed, is done a prophetic act, but we have walked in spiritual process, biblical process, because we are the covenant people of God. Don't miss me, you know. It's your understanding I want you to have that we carefully teach it to other nations. So we have to follow the, the biblical process of a covenant people because the only way for God to accept our sacrifice is not for us to sacrifice in the way that we think. The sacrifice must be done God's way, God's order. So we must be careful to learn the order of God, the way of God, and do it God's way if we want to see divine outcomes. So as the covenant people to heal a nation, because that's what I said to you, the process we have undertaken and we'll try to seal today is a process of the healing of a nation. And the healing of a nation begins with the covenanted people of God. A correct understanding 
of Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will what? Humble themselves. And you see what all we've been saying all morning is about what? Humbling ourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Do pray for me. I am preparing to speak to the Christian nation in the next week or so. And I need some of you to help me to put some, give me some money to pay for the broadcast for the Christian community. Because we have some misunderstandings and concepts about judgment. And therefore, we're missing how the thing works. And we take that verse and we are calling on the world to come together for the land to be healed. I don't want to go into it now, but I have to address it. But that's why it's not been happening. And the Lord, I myself wrote a book called Divine Ver Verdict some years ago about the judgment of God on the land. And I was preaching the same thing and tell the land how judgment Because I didn't know better. So I mix up the truth, I won't say lie, with the ignorance. <laughs> so I mix truth and ignorance. So that part true, but that part I know so it go. Because I didn't find out from God. I just follow what they tell me <laughs> and what I see them doing over the ears. But I see clearer. So I am compelled to speak to the nation in, another, in the next week if I can stop long enough and put it together, although I have to. But you know, pray for me because enough will go and throw me out and think I miss it. But I do have a choice. Because we have to understand God's way and do it right. So what we did, and that's what we did the first week, we, the people of God, because that scripture, if my people is not the world, it's God's people. He was talking to his people. He says, if you will repent, then I will heal your land. So that's why we took the first thing God says, you guys, over the years, everything I have told you to do, half of it or more you haven't done. That's a wicked way. Because to God, the wickedest way is the way of lack of faith expressed by disobedience. That's the wicked way. But he says, if you, my people, who are called by my name, come on, like I said, I want you to understand what we did, you know, to see what we do today. So that what? You can hope for what you will see tomorrow because it needs faith to establish the tomorrow but you have to have a basis for faith to believe so that's why the first week we had to repent for our sin our sins of disobedience of our own rebellion before God then Having repented of our sins, the basis for the healing of the land. For God says, I cannot heal the land unless you, my people, come to me and repent and take back your place to rule in the land. Then I can act because you are doing what you are supposed to do. So tell your neighbor, oh, we are all up things. Tell your neighbor, the nation been suffering because are we, are we cause it. 
Let me just stretch the elastic a little more. Tell your neighbor, stop blame the government. Them guilty too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Them guilty too. But stop blame them. Stop blame the gunman. Them. Stop blame the rapacious capitalists. Them. That word, uno would know. Some of we know back in the 70s and 80s. The rapacious capitalists. Them. <laughs> yeah. Stop blame the rapacious capitalists. Them. The biggest problem is God's people not doing what God has said. We are the problem in the nation. But tell your neighbor, we're changing it. We're turning it around. Come on, we're turning it around. Beloved, I'm speaking to you this morning because like the Apostle Paul says, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Because we are the chosen of God to help turn it around. So we have to understand it if others don't. So I want you to know then that we have to repent first, that first place. And then the second thing that's necessary in the process to heal the nation is the prophetic authority to stand and act in the spirit of the prof prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 and verse 10. That's what we did over the last two weeks again. What was that? In the, had to stand and nothing happens until it is what? Spoken. Reading it, knowing the Bible say it, will never bring change to anything. Until you believe it enough that we get full of the belief in our hearts so that it overflow through the mouth. That's what we did last week and the week before. <laughs> What did we do? We did the four things that was necessary and yea, six, to complete the exercise. What did we have to do? We had to uproot, tear down, overthrow, and destroy. With what? Our mouth in the authority of the power of the Spirit of God. We speak it. That's why many will think that nothing has happened. And even some of you may think, our person don't take up the whole eye service and keep we are filet till nearly 12 o'clock in the morning and we day about we are tear down and things. Uh, and it's not careful to the rice and peas that are all born. And you never realize that he saved. We were saving your life. And saving the life of your family. And setting apart for you. What we were doing is now understand, Bobby. What my father used to tell me a few times. About himself. He said, what me I do? Me a build course for monkey gallop. <laughs> yeah, him a build course, meaning is making a path for monkey for gallop. Now, who you think was the monkey them? <laughs> I call him, I call the whole of him pick the them monkey. Instead, that him out there, butter, butter for him a build course for monkey gallop. Tell the boy them, of course, yeah, Bill. <laughs> for monkey gallop. Oh, that butter butter every day. Of course, yeah, Bill, for monkey. What we have been doing the last two weeks is building the course for a nation 
to fulfill her divine destiny. So that was the second thing we did in the process. And the third thing in the process is what we must do today. We must now, as the people of God, who have repented of our sins, we must now repent on behalf of the people for the sins of the nation. Because we live in the nation. Amen, amen, amen. And if the nation suffer, we suffer. But if the nation prosper, we prosper. Because the power of the prosperity of a nation is in the hands of the people of God because he blesses the nation for the sake of his people. So don't tell them loud, but say to the world quietly, Jamaica out there, tell them, Jamaica out there is because of we. Why you are being blessed. So thank God for me. Yes. Because Abram interceded. He says, Lord, if you find five, will you save it? <laughs> they don't understand. That is we keeping them alive. And we don't even understand, we say. Because the all of the wickedness where they go on with the whole away should have dead off long time because the wages of sin is what? But for God's grace and his goodness. So we are preserving it. But it is our land because who did God give the rulership of the earth? Come on, who did he give the rulership of the earth? His people. That's who it was for. Not for the devil and his people. So now we have to stand this morning, having repented of our sins, we must now come humbly on behalf of our fathers, the sins of our fathers, and the sins of our people, our own family, and our own selves that we did because we are only the people of God since recently when you get saved. Because some of we forget the arms house you used to keep up. And I'm not calling any name, not coming to anybody in particular to blame them, but them know the arms house. <laughs> them used to keep up. When them around the place wild, doing all the ungodliness and destroying the nation. And we come now in church since we save. And we're saying, those sinners out there, look what they are doing to the country. What an awful set of people. And you forget at the same thing. You used to do. And if you're not careful, somehow no. Still I do it. Oh no. Although you come at church on the morning. But brother, no ask what you did this Saturday night and what you did that do before you come at church. And you are blame all the government then, them politicians, them thief, them thief, them thief, them thief, them thief so till. But every day. If we ever go to your yard and look how much things from your office we pack up there. <laughs> Who did give them to you? Not a person or you take them out. Some of you know, watch it now. If you go to your yard, you will see some cheer. Mark fellowship, tabernacle upon the back. <laughs> 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 
So what we are supposed to have, the, the good for the even one and two of these two, the cushion one them. Yes. So what we should have is one Sunday morning, we have a homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> for all of the things that belong to the church because we have lent to some people some equipment too we belong to the church we don't blame me for them but we, they will them borrow it but the record never keep properly nobody remember it we all go know it don't come back and we forget who have it. So one Sunday morning, Bobby, we must have homecoming for all this stuff. And try to bring them up. No, make we stop make bad bad things make laugh. Why? But beloved, we have to understand the reality. Come on, let's face it. So we are blaming them with all the sins and forgetting that you were part of that mess. You were contributing to it. And in some respects, you are still doing so even now. Maybe in other ways, not directly. Some of you did deny politics. I give the gun them too. And you did help. I give out God. And now you're standing back and you say, look at that wickedness. I can tell you this morning, most of the big business man them today, when me was a boy, me they live at a place near Red Hills. And a true Red Hills for God James Mountain. If we pick up the load of ganja, people are telling me for she. <laughs> <laughs> but is only the truth will set us free. In those days when I was a boy, in the 70s and 80s, I was then a young man. Well, oh, let me tell you the truth. Not tell them, let me tell you. We hear things that go through. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fire truck. I make a siren. I go, when we go check it out. No fire, no did it. <laughs> the only thing that did hot are the weed. Then come collect. And when them don't collect, Maurice come from Red Hills. Him did hear some of them. And when them come back through, a race a come back that you think fire. And they, them did a race figure, you know. You would have think them put out the fire. So when you have siren, <laughs> I come back when you put out the fire. But we didn't know. It's full of weed. <laughs> Cause we are young boy, we know where somebody feel and they and we know when they caught. <laughs> they are some of the wealthiest men who are running our country today, who are the big businesses today, and some of them now is speaking against it. And I hit, created their wealth. And some of we did mix up in it. Let's just come humbly. Come on. For we have sinned. Come on, beloved, are you there? We have what? We have all sinned. So let us not keep cursing those who are creating the mayhem. Let us pray for them. Just as how somebody prayed for us while we have salvation today. So this morning, that's the final side we have to do. We now must come 
on behalf of our nation and say to God, forgive us, we and our fathers have sinned. Forgive us our sins. Amen. So that he can what? Heal our land. We have to acknowledge it and turn it. And then we have to now speak with our mouth because we have the authority now to reestablish the things in the land. So last week we also build up and plant, but it can't happen if we don't remove the thing, the judgment. Come on, this is now the correct understanding of the judgment. We have sinned against the earth, in the earth. And the earth itself will spit you out because the earth knows and feels what we have done. The sin of the Amorites' cup had to become full before the earth could vomit them out. Let me just make this connection. You will hear it in the presentation I must do to the nation to help me. Port Royal, it is the sin that had built up over the years. Then just like we have seen all across the world and in Bible times, then the earth vomit them out. It's not God directly. It is the earth who vomited them out. Because the earth says, you have messed us up. Just like what you saw happen the day when Adam sinned, thorns and thistles sprang up. Because the earth says, no! You have violated. We have to now pray. Because Jamaica is ripe naturally. So some of what some preachers are preaching is part of it is right, but they wrongly understand it. Yes, we have sinned. And it takes a time for the sin to build up, build up, build up, build up, until the cup what? And when cup full what? Mm. That's exactly what we see in the scriptures. God told Abraham, the cup of the Amorites will not full, is not full. So you will be for 400 years down in Egypt, but after 400 years, the cup of the Amorites will be full, and the earth, not me, the earth will vomit them out, and I'm going to give you the land after the earth vomit them out. I had to look at it the other day when the place was shaped, Bobby. And said, oh, but then we have to go back go to talk to the Lord. And remember, this is just over 400 years since Port Royal, Jamaica, did shake. And if, it, it, if we use Abraham thing, it's over 400 years it take of wickedness for the cup full. And brother, no ox, if we are going with now, the cup now what? Got over 400 years now since Port Royal. So with you, if we can glean anything from that. So what we have to do this morning, Colin, we have to repent for them and get a fresh what? Start. We need God. Only him one can talk to the earth. But we become the voice of God to the earth. And we say, earth, ease back. Don't destroy Jamaica, because we die upon the ship. And we're not going down. And we have to talk to it and release a freshness for the land to be here. You're understanding it? I have had to take the time, beloved, because... If we don't understand it, we can't do it properly and make it come from the what? The heart. Because God only responds to the purity, sincerity of the heart that comes in faith. 
And so this morning, that's the, this is the third piece in it that we have to do this morning. And when we have done that, we can now see, and I can tell you,